Jim Cramer has shared his perspective on why the cryptocurrency market is crashing. The crypto market crashed on September 4th after the Bitcoin price slipped briefly below the $55,000 mark. The entire crypto market dropped 5.1% as $199 million worth of open positions comprising 75,500 traders got liquidated. The largest single liquidation order happened on the ETH-USDT pair on Binance, where the trader lost $2.94 million, according to data from Coinglass. On the other side, the traditional market wiped out $1 trillion from the U.S. stocks. As both the traditional and crypto market crash continue to deepen, the host of Mad Money on CNBC, Jim Cramer, has said the current downturn is not a market-wide sell-off but rather a sell-off of only AI, data center, and computing sectors. This comes after the stock of NVIDIA, the largest chip manufacturer in the world, fell almost 10% amid reports that the U.S. is ramping up an antitrust investigation against the company. Consequently, crypto artificial intelligence, AI, tokens took a hit, with the sector's total value dropping by 7.3% in the last 24 hours, according to crypto price tracking website CoinGecko. The crypto market eagerly awaits the release of the August non-farm payrolls on Friday. Analysts expect the data to come in higher than the previous 114,000. The U.S. Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index, PMI, for August came in at 47.9, down from July's 49.6. This reading is also the lowest in the last eight months and may have contributed to the current state of both traditional and crypto markets. If the NFP data exceeds expectations, it would indicate a stronger U.S. job market, potentially supporting the anticipated interest rate cuts at the upcoming FOMC meeting. However, Weaker-than-expected data could shift Fed Chair Jerome Powell's focus from controlling inflation to preventing job losses. Bitcoin is a digital currency that operates free of any central control or the oversight of banks or governments. Instead, it relies on peer-to-peer -peer software and cryptography. A public ledger records all Bitcoin transactions, and copies are held on servers around the world. Anyone with a spare computer can set up one of these servers, known as a node. Consensus on who owns which coins is reached cryptographically across these nodes rather than relying on a central source of trust like a bank. Every transaction is publicly broadcast to the network and shared from node to node. Every 10 minutes or so, these transactions are collected together by miners into a group called a block and added permanently to the blockchain. This is the definitive account book for Bitcoin. In much the same way you would keep traditional coins in a physical wallet, Virtual currencies are held in digital wallets and can be accessed from client software or a range of online and hardware tools. Bitcoins can currently be subdivided by seven decimal places. A thousandth of a Bitcoin is known as a milli, and a hundred millionth of a Bitcoin is known as a Satoshi. In truth, there is no such thing as a Bitcoin or a wallet, just an agreement among the network about the ownership of a coin. A private key is used to prove ownership of funds to the network when making a transaction. A person could simply memorize their private key and need nothing else to retrieve or spend their virtual cash, a concept known as a brain wallet. Can Bitcoin be converted to cash? Bitcoin can be exchanged for cash, just like any other asset. There are numerous cryptocurrency exchanges online where people can do this, but transactions can also be carried out in person or over any communications platform, allowing even small businesses to accept Bitcoin. There is no official mechanism built into Bitcoin to convert to another currency. Nothing inherently valuable underpins the Bitcoin network. But this is true for many of the world's most stable national currencies since leaving the gold standard, such as the US dollar and UK pound. What is the purpose of Bitcoin? Bitcoin was created as a way for people to send money over the internet. The digital currency was intended to provide an alternative payment system that would operate free of central control but otherwise be used just like traditional currencies. Are Bitcoins safe? The cryptography behind Bitcoin is based on the SHA-256 algorithm designed by the U.S. National Security Agency. Cracking this is, for all intents and purposes, impossible, as there are more possible private keys that would have to be tested, 2256, than there are atoms in the universe. There have been several high-profile cases of Bitcoin exchanges being hacked and funds being stolen, but these services invariably stored the digital currency on behalf of customers. What was hacked in these cases was the website, not the Bitcoin network. In theory, 
If an attacker could control more than half of all the Bitcoin nodes in existence, they could create a consensus that they owned all Bitcoin and embed that into the blockchain. But as the number of nodes grows, this becomes less practical. A realistic problem is that Bitcoin operates without any central authority. Because of this, anyone making an error with a transaction on their wallet has no recourse. If you accidentally send Bitcoins to the wrong person or lose your password, there is nobody to turn to. Of course, the eventual arrival of practical quantum computing could break it all. Much cryptography relies on mathematical calculations that are extremely hard for current computers to do, but quantum computers work very differently and may be able to execute them in a fraction of a second. What is Bitcoin mining? Mining is the process that maintains the Bitcoin network and also how new coins are brought into existence. All transactions are publicly broadcast on the network, and miners bundle large collections of transactions together into blocks by completing a cryptographic calculation that's extremely hard to generate, but very easy to verify. The first miner to solve the next block broadcasts it to the network, and if proven correct, it is added to the blockchain. That miner is then rewarded with an amount of newly created Bitcoin. Inherent in the Bitcoin software is a hard limit of 21 million coins. There will never be more than that in existence. The total number of coins will be in circulation by 2140. Roughly every four years, the software makes it twice as hard to mine Bitcoin by reducing the size of the rewards. When Bitcoin was first launched, it was possible to almost instantly mine a coin using even a basic computer. Now it requires rooms full of powerful equipment, often high-end graphics cards that are adept at crunching through the calculations, which, when combined with a volatile Bitcoin price, can sometimes make mining more expensive than it is worth. Miners also choose which transactions to bundle into a block, so fees of a varying amount are added by the sender as an incentive. Once all coins have been mined, these fees will continue as an incentive for mining to continue. This is needed as it provides the infrastructure for the Bitcoin network. Who invented Bitcoin? In 2008, the domain name.org was bought and an academic white paper titled Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system was uploaded. It set out the theory and design of a system for a digital currency free of control from any organization or government. The author, going by the name Satoshi Nakamoto, wrote, the root problem with conventional currencies is all the trust that's required to make it work. The central bank must be trusted not to debase the currency, but the history of fiat currencies is full of breaches of that trust. The following year, the software described in the paper was finished and released publicly, launching the Bitcoin network on January 9, 2009. Nakamoto continued working on the project with various developers until 2010 when he or she withdrew from the project and left it to its own devices. The real identity of Nakamoto has never been revealed, and they have not made any public statements in years. Now the software is open source, meaning that anyone can view, use, or contribute to the code for free. Many companies and organizations work to improve the software, including MIT. What are the problems with Bitcoin? There have been several criticisms of Bitcoin, including that the mining system is enormously energy-hungry. The University of Cambridge has an online calculator that tracks energy consumption, and at the beginning of 2021, it was estimated to use over 100 terawatt-hours annually. For perspective, in 2016, the United Kingdom used 304 terawatt-hours in total.